Thanks for watching this explanation of the Alpha Zero algorithm in the series going from AlphaGo to Mu Zero. Alpha Zero doesn't make dramatic changes to the algorithm used from AlphaGo Zero, whereas AlphaGo Zero builds heavily on AlphaGo by doing things like introducing a residual neural network, combining the value and policy networks into a single network, and then using this extension to the self-play Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. Alpha Zero rather extends this uh, line of papers by generalizing the game from Go into chess and shogi. The paper describes some of the specific details of extending this algorithm from Go into chess and shogi, different concerns that might be problematic for uh, doing chess, for example, modeling long range dependencies, like having the queen that can move from the bottom right hand of the corner all the way to the top by moving along diagonally or doing this kind of thing. And also you don't get to do things like data augmentation and miscellaneous other details with respect to scaling up this algorithm from Go into playing other games like chess and shogi, which is gonna be the fundamental transition into making this algorithm more general, more useful for problems overall, and transitioning into the final paper in the series, the Mu Zero algorithm. This video will explore the third paper in the series, going from AlphaGo to AlphaGo Zero, and now the third paper, AlphaZero. So AlphaZero is the first step towards making these algorithms more general, going beyond just the game of Go, and now we're exploring the utility of this al algorithm into chess and shogi. So quick recap, the idea of AlphaGo Zero is to use the Monte Carlo tree search that produces this action distribution pi in order to improve the training of the policy mapping in the policy network, and then to also use the return from the self-play to update the value. So you have this one neural network in AlphaGo Zero that's predicting both the value estimate from a current state and the policy, the policy being a distribution of actions given the state. So in AlphaGo Zero, you combine both the value network and the policy network into a single neural network and then you're training it by using the action distribution found by Monte Carlo Tree Search in order to improve the algorithm in self-play. So Alpha Zero is going to use the same algorithm, but it's going to see how you can extend this into chess and shogi, and it's also going to make some slight modifications to the details of how this is implemented in order to make the algorithm more general. The first change made from Alpha Zero to Alpha Go Zero is that you have to account for this reward scale. So alpha zero denoted AZ has to account for draws as well as binary wins or losses. So in the game of Go, the game always ends in win or loss, which makes the reward scale a lot easier for the value network to predict because it's always gonna be either plus one or minus one. But in this case, you have a slightly more complicated label distribution because you have win, loss, and draw as well. The next difference between alpha zero and alpha go zero is that while the rules of go are invariant to rotations, this is a version of the same board rotated 90 degrees and then rotated 180 degrees, in which case the overall strategy and the state, uh, the value estimate of all of these states are going to be equivalent. So alpha go zero uses this in order to augment the training data by generating symmetries for each position and then using these positions in the Monte Carlo tree search so that the Monte Carlo evaluation is more robust. It's average over the different biases it might have over different configurations of the board for whatever reason, maybe due to the initialization of parameters or whatever might cause different value estimates for the same state. But they use this data augmentation in order to make more use out of the data that they have. But in this case, in chess, you don't have this kind of symmetry. You can't just rotate the board. And reflection, you can't do that either because of things like uh, how you castle the how you move the king and the castle to you know flip them like that. You can't do that if you flip the board. So there's a, a lot of different ideas that you can't just kind of rotate it and use this data augmentation. The next difference between alpha zero and alpha go zero is that alpha zero is less critical about the way that it does self-play. So alpha go zero has a significant criterion to becoming the best player that's used with self-play. You have to win the games with a margin of 55%, and then the version of the neural network, the parameters that won by this margin of 55%, now become the best player that you play against in the self-play training loop. But Alpha Zero throws that idea away and just simply maintains the single neural net that's updated continually, and the self-play games are just generated with the latest parameters. So it's a simpler way of uh, doing this kind of self-play algorithm, and it turns out to work better because when you compare Alpha Zero and Alpha Go Zero on the game of Go, this is really the only key distinction in addition to not using data augmentation between these two algorithms on the game of Go. The next interesting distinction between AlphaZero and AlphaGo0 is that AlphaGo0 uses a Bayesian optimization of the hyperparameters. Different hyperparameters in the search could include things like the temperature of how you factor in the count of visited states into the weighting of making that max selection in the Monte Carlo tree search when you're choosing between edges to explore, and then also this epsilon parameter in the epsilon degree exploration parameter in the tree search where you take the optimal action with probability epsilon, and then with one minus epsilon, you just select another edge randomly. So in AlphaGo0, they use the Bayesian optimization to optimize this hyperparameter of the search, 
but in alpha uh, zero, they're gonna use the same hyperparameters for all the games. So they're not gonna have a specific set of uh, exploration or uh, you know, Monte Carlo tree search parameters for chess, shogi, and go. One of the interesting characteristics of extending AlphaGo Zero to games like chess and shogi is that Go is well suited for convolutional filters. So convolutional filters, in this case showing something like a 3x3 convolution or some you know, convolutional kernel that is significantly less than the n by n dimensions of the grid, you have this local filter that you're sliding across the board representation in order to extract these features from the Go game. So Go is well suited for these local convolutional filters because the way that this game works is you're basically trying to like uh, enclose the, if you're the white player and you're, you're trying to like enclose, if you put your white piece here, and then you kind of, maybe they put it here and you put it there and that kind of a, a progression, the, all the black pieces would be taken away because it's about having this local connectivity in order to kind of conquer the territory of the board. So that's kind of the way that the Go game is played. It's very uh, reliant on these local features to make sense of the game. There are a lot of new challenges that come with scaling up Go to chess and shogi. Some of these things are that the rules are position dependent. For example, a pawn can only move diagonally if there's a piece to capture, otherwise it has to move straight, and other things like this. Also, the board is asymmetric. You can't just flip it because of the uh, orientation of the king and queen. If you flip it, you have a different kind of board uh, representation. And then there are these long range interactions. So it kind of made this uh, map to show you that the queen could, say if it was here, it could go from this local position all the way over here. So you see how the kind of idea of having this uh, convolutional filter, say it's like three by three looking at this little grid, is not as useful. There's more challenges to this because it has to model these long range dependencies. So it might be interesting, in this case, they're using the same uh, residual neural network style architecture from AlphaGo Zero, but it might be interesting to see these kinds of self-attention layers. Like we see with OpenAI's hide and seek agents, for example, they have this kind of a transformer-like architecture with the way that they uh, represent the state position, which is pretty interesting. So you can think of uh, attention layer being useful with something like this as well. So the next challenge is that the action space in this case is much larger. You can't just, uh, it's not just like mapping directly to where you wanna put the dot in Go. In this case, you select the piece and then you select the movement that you wanna make. And then in addition to this, the games, as mentioned earlier, may result in draws. So modeling the reward signal is a little more complicated because it isn't just a binary one, uh, one minus one classification problem. Rather, you have this intermediate state of zero in the draw. This is the state representation that's used as the input to the neural network in Go, Chess, and Shogi. This case being a residual neural network that uses these convolutional filters to process the input state representation and map it to a value estimate of the current state, as well as an action distribution given this current state. So in the game of Go used in AlphaGo Zero, what you have is you have one feature plane where you would have a one in the case of where the player one stones are and zero otherwise, and then you have the one in the case of the player two stones. And then you would have this binary feature plane that denotes the color, the, which player the agent is. So what they do in Go, as well as Chess and Shogi, is they're gonna stack these frames together from the history. So what they do is this makes up one feature plane and they're going, or well this top one does, they only have one binary feature. They're gonna take these uh, two feature planes and they're gonna grab the last eight time steps. That's how they get to the total of 17 planes. So they have the uh, previous eight positions of player one and the previous eight positions of player two. So using this history sort of enhances the ability of the agent to make predictions about the future. So they do the same kind of idea in chess and shogi. They repeat the feature planes to incorporate the history, denoting this uh, T parameter and the MT by L dimension of this input state tensor. So in chess, they have different planes for the player one piece, uh, the player two pieces, and then other different characteristics about the game that are used to make up this state representation that goes as input to the residual neural network. One interesting difference between this alpha zero algorithm for computer chess compared to some of the classic chess algorithms like the uh, Stockfish algorithm that it's compared against is that these algorithms use this form of alpha beta pruning in minimax tree search compared to the Monte Carlo tree search. So minimax tree search is kind of this idea of you traverse the tree and you don't just kind of average out the reward expectations from your perspective, rather you kind of have this better heuristic of traversing the tree where you're sort of iteratively so selecting the action that's the best for you and then the best for the opponent and then the best for you, the best for the opponent. So you're not just trying to maximize your rewards, you're trying to do it by kind of minimizing the options that your opponent has. But so it's a more complicated search and that's not really the best explanation of it. But basically in alpha beta pruning, you need a good heuristic in order to traverse that tree and get a good estimate of you know, which uh, branches of the tree you should cut off. But in Monte Carlo search, what you do is you just go on and average it out from each uh, state 
and this is better suited to the approximation error of the deep neural networks. So if you did something like uh, trying to do this alpha beta pruning with the deep neural networks, if you had an error in the value estimate of the neural network, that might get propagated all the way to the bottom of the tree because alpha beta pruning minimax search is gonna take, say this uh, value estimate is mistakenly high or low, you're gonna propagate that all the way to the end of the tree and it's gonna destroy the search. So Monte Carlo search is more robust to this kind of uh, approximation error in neural networks. If you're interested in learning more about alpha beta pruning and this kind of minimax search, I highly recommend watching this video from Peter Beal, who's one of the leaders in the field of artificial intelligence. This section from the AlphaZero paper describes some of these handcrafted features that were used in the old computer chess programs compared to doing raw feature extraction from this input state representation with deep convolutional neural networks. So they have these different kind of features that they use in order to uh, do their alpha beta uh, minimax search and make moves with computer chess. So they have all of these different kinds of features that they engineer and you know kind of encode these priors into the computer chess algorithm that makes it uh, you know able to sense the board state. So there's a big difference between using these residual networks that just look at this input state representation and then come up with a policy mapping from that compared to doing some mapping from this uh, sparse vector of handcrafted features. This slide describes some of the training details of the alpha zero algorithm. So training proceeds for 700,000 steps trained with mini batches of 4096. So these mini batches are when you're updating the uh, Z minus V as well as the uh, pi policy compared to the P policy mapped from the neural network and you're doing this to update the parameters of the network. So one thing that's interesting is that they use 5,000 first generation TPUs to generate these self play games and then 64 second generation TPUs to train the neural networks. So when you see the reporting of alpha zero and it says things like uh, it beat the stockfish, the previous best, uh, chess algorithm with the handcrafted features and the alpha beta tree search in something like three hours. This is a little bit, uh, you know, misleading because they are using this massive computer that allows you to do this in three hours. You couldn't do this with, say, you know, a single GPU or on a laptop. So it's a little bit, you know, misleading to see the three hours is all it takes to train alpha zero. This plot shows the results of the alpha zero algorithm on Go, Shogi, and chess. Interestingly is the results of the Go between alpha zero, alpha go zero, and alpha go Lee. You can see in this case, Alpha Zero does not make big improvements to Alpha Go Zero on the game of Go. You see just a slight improvement that is likely attributed to this restructuring of the way that the self-play uh, game kind of holds on to this champion by winning by that margin of 55%. And not doing that, as well as not doing the data augmentation, seems to result in a slightly better result on the uh, Go game. But you can see in the win-loss table that Alpha Zero doesn't exactly blow Alpha Go Zero out of the water on the game of Go. They're really pretty similar algorithms. But what's interesting about Alpha Zero is that it's not just playing Go, it's also playing Shogi and chess, games that have previously relied on these handcrafted features and these complicated tree searches. So you see in the game of chess, Alpha Zero uh, outperforming Stockfish, but they note that this ELO rating is sort of tricky because of the draw outcome. So it's better to look at this table where you see that Alpha Zero never loses to Stockfish, and they have this kind of distribution of wins and draws. And then you also see the performance of Alpha Zero compared to Elmo on the more complicated Shogi game. Another interesting result is the performance with respect to thinking time, because the Monte Carlo tree search doesn't require as much planning ahead as the Minimax search does. So you see when you have this different amount of seconds per move, the difference in the Alpha Zero algorithm compared to Stockfish, and the difference in Alpha Zero compared to Elmo on Shogi. Another interesting characteristic of the Alpha Zero algorithm is that it learns these common chess opening moves that are described as things like the English opening, the Queen's Pawn game, the King's Indian defense. So what this plot is showing is the different opening positions and then the distribution of how often the uh, AlphaGo, the AlphaZero algorithm uses these openings with respect to its training time. So with certain move openings like the French defense, it comes to this time where it's using it a lot, about 12% of the time it's doing this opening, and then it kind of uses it less throughout its training. Then you see other moves like this uh, Spanish opening that it uses more as it trains for longer. So it's interesting to see the discovery of this chess information from the alpha zero algorithm when it's trained as they say uh, tabula rasa from scratch random weights learning how to play the game of chess thanks for watching this explanation of the alpha zero paper alpha zero doesn't make too many dramatic changes to the algorithm in alpha go zero in this line going from alpha go to alpha go zero to now alpha zero but the idea in alpha zero that's really important is that you're looking at how you can extend this algorithm to make it more general to go from just playing go to playing shogi and chess as well and this is done by having this new input state representation and showing the generality of this Monte Carlo tree search, this kind of algorithm of using the self-play with the Monte Carlo tree search and seeing, showing that it can play games other than Go, even though these games require things like long-range dependency modeling 
having a more complex reward structure, and then having the asymmetric uh, game board that doesn't allow you to do things like data augmentation. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.